In this chapter 2 of mastering SnowSQL client playlist, we will install the SnowSQL client on Windows machine. We explored why SnowSQL is essential for Snowflake developers and Snowflake admins. If you haven't seen the previous video, watch it first for better clarity. In this video, we will cover following hands-on topic. Where to download the SnowSQL client from? Download the Windows MSI file, perform the installation activities and check the SQL client version. Connect to a Snowflake instance using command line options and also understand what options are required for them. Check the log files and how logging errors are recorded in this file. And also check the account usage login history table to understand how the access failures are required, which is very, very important for Snowflake admins. If you are new to the channel, here is a quick tip to enhance your experience. Set video quality to 4K, choose your preferred audio language and adjust playback speed for faster learning. All hands-on exercises used in this playlist are done using Snowflake Free Trial Edition. Got questions? Comment below or message me on Instagram. So let's start our exercise. So go to your browser and open this URL docs.snowflake.com and search for SnowSQL client using the search text box. So once you press enter, the Snowflake documentation page will show you the result. Click on the first result that says SnowSQL CLI client. Snowflake constantly enhanced its search experience, so your result might be slightly different. However, look for SnowSQL CLI client. Click on this title, a new page will appear. Scroll down and here it will show you all the operating systems and supported version of those OS. If your OS is not listed here, it is very likely that this SnowSQL client would not work on your operating system. So please review it before you proceed from here. Now, from the left panel, click on Installing Options and once this page is loaded, click on SnowSQL Download link and it will take you to the snowflake.com slash en slash developers slash downloads slash SnowSQL page. Alternatively, you can also use Google or any other search approach to come to this link or you can directly copy paste this link and load the page. Now, if you scroll down, you would see these options. Select SnowSQL for Windows option. This will list all the latest version of installation entries along with older version 2. Click on the first MSI entry and it will start the download operation. The MSI file size is around 36 MB. If you find higher version than this, prefer to download that version. Now, my download is completed and before I install this SnowSQL client on my machine, let me check how it looks like when I run the SnowSQL command on my command prompt. So this is my command prompt and I issued a SnowSQL command and the result says the command is not recognized because I have not yet installed. So let's open the download folder and double click on this MSI client. Now, I'm not changing any option. I'm going with the default option. However, you can choose any other folder as per your need. Make sure that you have administrative privileges in your Windows machine. Once the installation is done successfully, a getting started pop-up will appear on your screen with instruction that says how to connect with Snowflake. And it shows two approaches as on today. The first approach using the command line with parameter and second approach is primarily passing this parameter through the configuration file which we will cover in the future chapter. So since I just completed the installation, the installation has changed the path parameter and other options and that's why I opened a new command prompt window. Let me issue the SnowSQL command with minus minus version option. And you see the result shows 1.3.3 and that confirms the setup is done correctly and working fine. So far, we managed to download the installable files. We installed the SnowSQL client and the next step, we would check if we can establish a connection with our Snowflake instance or not. If you just run the command SnowSQL without any parameter, the command prints all the options that can be used with SnowSQL client and we will go through all the option at the later part. But for now, we just need minus A, which denotes your 
account ID and minus U, which is for the user. So we are going to primarily focus this two option and try to establish a connection with our Snowflake instance. So let's try to find out what is our account ID and we will also create a separate user for this exercise. I am here in my SnowSite web UI and I am going to create a database called SnowSQL underscore DB using system admin role and then switch the role to account admin and create a user called data engineer 01 and assign this user sysadmin role. If you look into the user creation script, the change password flag is false. So it does not force me to change the password when I access my account first time. So my database is created and I am going to use the default public schema. So finally, my user is created and I am going to assign the system admin role to this user. Now, let's try to find what is my account ID. For that, let's click on this profile icon and you click on the view account detail link. Once you click on this, the first entry on the pop-up is account identifier. Either you can highlight and copy it or you can copy this entire text using this copy icon. And that is what the value for our minus a parameter or minus minus account parameter. So let's go back to our command prompt and type that account identifier for minus a parameter and data engineering 01 for minus u parameter. So this is my full command is no SQL minus a followed by account ID minus u followed by username and I press the enter. Now as soon as I press the enter it prompts the password enter the password. So you have to give the password in silent mode. If you look into the command prompt title bar, it shows that we are running a SnowSQL command with account ID and the username. Finally, it prints the version. So my command got executed successfully and this shows a new prompt with my SnowSQL version 1.3.3. And if you look into the prompt text, it says my username data engineering 01 followed by my database and schema name. When we created our user data engineering 01, we have given the default database, default schema and default role. And when this connection was established, that default option is considered by the SnowSQL. And that's how this prompt is created. Since we are in a SnowSQL CLI command prompt, now let's run one context function using a select statement. As you start typing the function name, the autocomplete feature is already enabled and it would show the right function name. So you can click on the tab and autocomplete will pick the text or the function name. Now, once the function name is selected, use the round bracket followed by semicolon as a SQL statement terminator and press enter. So our current client context function result is no SQL 1.3.3 and that's what it is. So let's go back to our Snowflake web UI using data engineering 01 as a user ID and let's check the query history screen. So this is my query history screen. Just add the client driver option from the column menu. And now this shows the client driver name as a SnowSQL client 1.3.3. So any query which is being executed or issued from your SnowSQL client 1.3.3, in this screen, it will be registered with SnowSQL. Let's go back to our command prompt, run few more queries. So I am running select current database followed by current schema and uh, let's see what result does it bring. So let's go back to our query history screen and see how does it display. So if you see here, all the statement which is issued from our client is registered as a SnowSQL 1.3.3 client. So if you have to exit from this session, you have to use this character exclamation mark followed by the exit keyword. It is auto-populated here, or you can also use a bot. So this autocomplete shows lot of options. So you can scroll up and down, pick the correct one and press the tab button and followed by semicolon and come out of this SnowSQL client prompt. So far, so good. Let's quickly simulate what happens if we give incorrect information and how the error messages looks like from our command prompt. So start with incorrect or incomplete account ID and I delete the last digit of my account ID 3 from the account ID and try to connect to our Snowflake instance. So as soon as I press enter, it prompts for password and I entered the correct password. After a while, an error message appears saying 
25003 error code followed by error code 404 and if you look into this account id the 3 is missing which is not the correct snowflake account id so always go through your profile option view account detail link and copy paste the account id rather than typing it out in your command prompt now let's start with incorrect username and this time i fix the account id and i also provided the correct password let's see what happens it clearly says that incorrect user id and or password since connection is not established nothing will be recorded in the query history screen now let's simulate another scenario where i will keep the account id and the user id both the options are correct but i would input the wrong password and let's see what happens it also ends with the same error saying user id or password is incorrect right now let's take another scenario where i go to the web ui and disable the user now our user is disabled let's go back to the command prompt and try to establish a connection with that user id so this time all the information is correct account id username and password and let's see what happens it clearly says the user access is disabled if you are encountering any issues with account id user id password or disabled user you should be able to understand this error messages and accordingly take an action to correct them now let's try to understand where the log files are stored so on windows machine the snow sql logs are stored inside your user profile in this case it is users slash hp and then there is a folder called dot snow sql and then you can see the log file so let's open this log file in our vs code text editor to see the line number 12 404 error is registered which is our first scenario where account id was incorrect if you come down to line number 78 it is another scenario where i gave the incorrect username however password was correct and this is recorded clearly if i look into the line number 140 which was our we disabled the user and we simulated the scenario and here the message is very clear that user account is disabled so this is a log file which is very very handy to check what's going wrong and what needs to be corrected to fix the problem so now let's go to our account usage schema and see if incorrect login entries are captured or not so if you have account admin access in your snowflake instance you can simply run the following query and it will show you all the login audit entries so for a simplicity i have already filtered with my username data engineer 01 so i got the result so this is the event id so every successful or a failed attempt which is able to establish a connection with snowflake is recorded as an event id this is the event type which is a login okay if i click on that you see here so there are total 18 entries uh, this is user id and if you see this user has accessed 14 times via snow sql cli and uh, four times via snowflake ui okay and if you look into the version this is my snowflake version and this is my snow sql client it is matching every time it has authenticated through password you can also authenticate through private key or sso and in that case your authentication first authentication mechanism will look little different if i select here yes or no so there are eight success and 10 failures looks good and this is the error code so you can see the error code and if i say error message here you can see incomplete user name password and here it says that user access disabled and here it says user locked if you are a snowflake administrator this is a page where you can come and we would see in the later part of this playlist how you can capture and analyze this information on a regular basis to make sure that there is no breach or vulnerability in your snowflake setup so we managed to install configure and test our connection and covered all this topic we also understood where the logs are stored and how this configuration issues are registered with our log files in the next chapter we are going to cover how to establish a connection using configuration 5 and how we can establish multiple snowflake connection to target our dev test and production environment which is a very common use case once we complete the configuration file 
we will again come back for a Linux configuration and macOS configuration and validate where the log files are stored and how we can fix configuration or parameter issues. So I will see you in the next chapter, chapter three. Hope you got something valuable from this video. If you did, please hit the like button and this will help others to discover the relevant snowflake video tutorial. And if you think this can help someone in your team, feel free to share. Thanks for watching and happy learning.